impacting her as an actress. So let's see if she comes back. Hello. <laughs> Perfect. Don't know what happened there. Sorry. That's okay. No problem. We'll stay stable. Um, yeah, sorry. So um, um, I just felt really blocked. Mm -hmm. um, I knew it was to do with my conditioning. Mm -hmm. And um, the weird thing was that whenever I played in um, somebody that needed to express joy or happiness, I couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. even though I'm a really joyful person and, you know, I find real joy and happiness with my family and particularly with nature, I just couldn't find it. Mm -hmm. And um, I just had to, I just had to pretend. And the more I pretended, the more it felt awful and the more it was false and the more pushing. And, you know, I just thought I, I have to do something. So, so you're a joyful person and you can't access joy when you act and so you have to push can you go a little bit more into what's the experience of that as an actress oh. to playing and to not be able to access a part of yourself that's so truthful and so you have to like you say put a mask what what are you what's going on in your body when you do that oh fear total fear i just felt all at sea like i'd completely lost my anchor mm. um, the anxiety was ridiculous and then of course i built up anxiety before going to cast things and when i got a self tape and it was just this perpetual thing it was just catch 22 all the time and um i just thought i don't know what i'm going to do about this mm. and it got to a point you know not too long ago and i thought well are you really going to do this you know you really or you're going to you're going to tap out, you know, mm -hmm. what, 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 what are you going to do? How are you going to get past these blocks and, and past this fear? And I did think about going to therapy and I, <clears throat> I looked into a bunch of stuff and I thought, no, that doesn't feel quite right. Um, I want to be able to access myself at a different level. Mm -hmm. and I, I just didn't know. I just didn't know how to, to be honest. <laughs> well, what, the thing is, uh, I like the way you put it. There is no how to. You're born yourself and then you're asked to not be yourself and to behave like other people want you to, to feel what other people want you to, to think what other people tell you to. And so you're forced and coerced and punished into never being yourself. So you're trained to not be yourself. So inevitably, yes, if you're an artist at one point and the art has to come from you like well how do i access that and that's where people will have a tendency and maybe you've done that too mm -hmm. to look for an external method a technique to access myself or method or a better acting teacher or another acting school or a more you know famous acting teacher um did you catch yourself doing that too like trying a lot of things outside of yourself like trusting a lot of external authorities before everything. going yeah everything i was always on a course mm. whether it was dance or it was mm. acting or whatever i was always kind of seeking for something actually i almost didn't know what it was yeah. but i kept trying and i was i kind of sometimes i got close to it mm -hmm. and i was like no that's not it and i just couldn't crack myself open i just couldn't is that when you you decided um, to reset yourself? Mm. Okay. Yeah. And, and how long had this loop been going on before? Oh, my gosh. Um, I would say a few years. Mm -hmm. And then particularly after the lockdown um, and when restrictions were lifted, um, I'd lost all my confidence completely. I mean, like all of us, none of us had any work, did we? So um i just thought oh i'm gonna give up it's this is this is impossible you know and then when i was having self tapes come through i was getting really anxious about them and then sort of putting on you know bolstering myself and going i'm fine i'm absolutely fine yeah and just pushing it all down and the more i pushed it the worse it got you know? yeah yeah and the worse it feels yeah and then um you decide to do the opposite of what's suggested and do the opposite of learning something new and you decide to reset yourself. So how was the experience of resetting yourself? How did that feel? Well, firstly, what I loved was that the showing up every single day, mm -hmm. no matter what I had going on, 
no matter the fear, the anxiety or whatever, just bringing it all in. And I was highly resistant to it <laughs> a lot of the time. Um, some days I just didn't want to do it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. And I was like, just do it, just do it. I did it. And then I felt amazing, obviously, because I'd done the work and it wasn't tapping me on the shoulder all day, just saying, you haven't done that work. <laughs> um, and then there were, there were some things that were just, ah, oh, okay. And, and I kind of knew it. And, and then I was like, yeah, okay, let's dive straight in. Let's go right in, you know, and it wasn't, it was uncomfortable. Of course it was really uncomfortable and I'm still a work in progress, mm. but, um, I'm at a point now where I'm just, um, I just don't care. I'm not attached to a result. I'm just, I'm really buzzing. I'm like really alive and I've noticed a real difference in the way I am, the way I talk, the way I show up for myself. I'm excited about the work now. Um, and I'd lost all excitement for it. I, I said to my family, look, I'm only giving myself till December and then that's it. I quit. I can't, I can't keep doing this to myself. You know, it's, it, it actually felt torturous and I know it sounds really ridiculous and pretentious, but it really was. No. <laughs> Okay, I, you know, like we have so many, we've had about 4,000 actors reset themselves. And so we hear all of the, you know, why are you doing this? And the higher uh, the actors, the like the longest they've been actors, the more they've worked, the heavier the words are. It's a torture to act, I'm hearing. It's excruciating to act. That, I mean, they're very heavy words. Like, I hate it. And yet, I don't know what else I would do because that's what I do. And um, I think that the, the more you work, the more painful it becomes if you're not really truthfully and freely expressing yourself because you can't blame the lack of success anymore, right? So if you're not having enough credits or not having enough opportunities, usually I'll hear actors hide behind that. Well, I'm not great yet because no one's offering me a great role, but once I'll get the great opportunity, then I'll feel amazing. Mm -hmm. Like, no, no, because it, it really has to do, you are the one who is responsible for the fulfillment, for how it feels, not the director, not the opportunity, not, not none of it, not the credits, not the stuff, not the money, none of it. It's really how you're able to show up truthfully and freely. That's the only common denominator, yeah. Yeah, 100%. So, so now you're excited. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's amazing. It's yeah. amazing. How is your access to your joy? Oh, it's great. Yeah, it's like um, stupid. Oh, I love <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. And, and on a personal level as well, as I said, you know, and just really joyful. I'm like, I feel like I've kind of slept walked and and kept myself in that fear mm -hmm. and now i'm like I, I imagine my fear and my anxiety like um a really old stone like i'm really into ancient history and i often go around to these sites you know and, and look at megaliths and stuff it's a bit geeky but anyway so i imagine my fear and anxiety is one of these stones and i'm like picking it up and go okay you great lump mm -hmm. you know let's move forward you're coming with me so i like, just you know i love it I love it. Yeah. And thank God we have those sensations, right? Because they are our guidance system. They're telling you, oh, there's something that's not working. So I'm going to alert you to feel this and listen to this so that you can change it and adjust, yeah. right? We don't listen to those emotions if we repress them all, which we're told to do since childhood. Mm. Well, we're just, yeah, we're just blind and numbed and following other people's advice about how to be ourselves, which doesn't make any yeah. sense. You know how to show up yourself and you don't even know. Actually, you discover it in every yeah. moment. Yeah. Uh, free and truthful. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Is there anything else that you would like to share that you feel like? Um, yeah. Um, so all of this started when I, like everybody really, like every creative says, I suppose, like you do as a kid, you're performing and you're singing, you're dancing, not any, any class. I mean, I'm talking about just in my mother's kitchen. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> and um, it's just, it was just wonderful. And I just remember this moment where apparently I started doing like uh, comical um, um, impressions 
reactions of people off the TV. And I used to do particular ones of my mum's favourite soap, which is Coronation Street here in the UK, which is still really popular. And I just remember at about four, my mum really laughing like a drain. And it, it suddenly, and I was like, I felt like I had some sort of superpower. Like it was really, ma I was really magic. Like I was a magician for making my mum so happy and laughing. And I was like, that's really nice. So I kept on doing it. And then um, it wasn't until I was in school, really, I was about 12 and um, we were doing, uh, we were going to do Oklahoma. And I auditioned for Ada or Annie, you know, the comedy part. And I thought, oh, I'm going to get this. This is going to be so much fun. And the, the nun said, uh, no, mm. absolutely not. And I was like, oh, my God. And they were like, you're going to play Curly. Mm -hmm. And it was literally just because I, I have really curly, crazy hair. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, I've got to play a cowboy. Uh, anyway, did it. Absolutely loved it. And I managed to find the humor in that in that mm. role. And I just remember the audience laughing, yeah. hopefully in a good way. <laughs> yeah. and, and it took me right back to that feeling of when I was a kid. Because I was in a convent, I wasn't living at home. And, and, and I was, I felt joyous i felt comforted i felt i felt like it, it it was it was just yeah it was just comfort and um well, you, you know what's funny is like you're not finding the word right because there's really no word to explain when you're really right there really you on purpose doing exactly what you're supposed to do fully mm. expressing it there's nothing in your way there's no words, but it's that's being truly alive. It's really being living the exact thing you came to live. Yeah, and nothing yeah. like that is actually we shouldn't accept it. Yeah, exactly. And and what the reason I mentioned all of that was because that's how I feel now. Uh, that's you know, amazing. That's how I feel because I spent years not doing it, and 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 really when I look back, it was just excuses. And I've only been in the industry seven years as an actor. Yeah. You know, I was a professional dancer before that, and. You know, it, I still feel quite green, but um, now I just think I've waited so long. I've given, finally given myself permission after, mm -hmm. after all this time, you know, even though I've been in the industry seven years. So it's, yeah, I'm just really happy. <laughs> Great. I'm so happy to be mm -hmm. able to see that and witness you in this, uh, you know, coming back to yourself. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Well, thank you. Kate. Thank, thank you. you and the team and everybody and the community that you know are in the reset group all the resetters you know everyone's just so supportive and watching everybody's journeys as well yeah. um as they reset you know that's really inspiring and actually a lot of that when i had resistant days mm -hmm. made me do it i'm like they're showing up why aren't you so i did and i'm so grateful that i did it's so good great like i know that people think you know sometimes they think oh a community <laughs> uh, I don't care what is that and it's so valuable mm -hmm. because it's such such a truthful heart-based community it's not like you're it's not an acting school it's not an acting workshop so the actors and artists who are showing up in that community are all coming without the competition spirit without comparing themselves without being there to perform but actually mm -hmm. to do the to undo everything that is a lie about me so that i can show up truthfully so everyone's vulnerable everyone's open-hearted everyone's showing up vulnerable and and i think yeah it's it's uh i mean when people don't know and haven't tasted what real tribe feels like they'll feel like oh who cares it's saved lives i mean this community is incredible yeah it really is yeah. do it <laughs> <laughs> enjoy all of it yeah even even in the discomfort even oh with the, my god it's yeah, part, of, in that. part of it yeah yeah absolutely um just being willing to go there and just coming through the other side isn't it you know it just muscles it all in and yeah and then you got your your childlike freedom oh. back, which is priceless oh, it's priceless to be honest yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing yourself and sharing your journey with this. Um, to I want to say to the people who have been watching that I hope that this is helping you um, really get to see like where you're at on your journey as an actor, as an artist, to see if you are able to be truthfully yourself, if you are able to be really freely present 
not repressing, not masking anything, but really showing up. And if you're not, shoot us a DM, let us know that you want some information and we'll happily send you that. Um, in the meantime, thank you so much, Kate, and I'll see you guys soon. See you soon. Thanks, Joe. Bye. Bye-bye.